Hello and welcome to another Puzzling Time video. Now this is a puzzle review channel for people who uh, haven't seen these videos before, rather than a puzzle solving channel. Occasionally I'll solve a vintage puzzle, something against time, or, or maybe something very obscure that you can't actually purchase. But ultimately, um, I tend to review puzzles on this channel. And the puzzle I'm going to review today is called Missing Tile. It's by Gopit Kiam which is one of my favourite designers. He's designed uh, puzzles such as 3-in-1 and Dancing Shoes. Uh, I've got 3-in-1, I've reviewed that in the past, so please check that out. Dancing Shoes, I'm desperate to get hold of a, of a Tom Lynch version of Dancing Shoes. Uh, Tom does a lot of uh, Pitt's um, craft work for him, uh, and this puzzle's no different. This is, uh, got the Tom Lynch stamp, on the back there, it was bought direct from him. And the aim of this puzzle is twofold. Firstly, take the seven largest pieces and fill the tray completely full. And by completely full, we mean no gaps whatsoever, all the way around, so think pieces fit snugly. Now, what's strange about this puzzle is that not all the pieces are perfectly cuboid like this. Some of the puzzles have these slanted edges, turning them into uh, trapeziums or trapezoids rather than uh, cuboids. So when you pack them away, you might think, oh, they're going to stand and leave a gap. But actually on the two shorter edges here, they're cut away so that it slides underneath. So this piece could be this long, for example, and have that piece slide in. Or it could be that long, and actually I need to use this piece. So there's an extra dynamic to solving this puzzle. It's not just as simple as taking these seven large pieces, and putting them into the tray. There's actually a lot more to it. Once you've completed that challenge, challenge number two is then add the eight small piece and fill the tray completely full. And that small piece there is the missing tile. So once you've completed it, it looks perfect, no gaps, nice graining on the wood, wonderful wood. Not quite sure what this wood is. Might be cherry, maybe it's a bit light for cherry, I don't know. Some wood expert out there can probably tell me. Um, but then you've got to make enough space uh, by putting this tile in. And as you'd expect, you know, you've got to completely disassemble the puzzle to put it back together. Now, although I love the, the, um, the build of this and I love the designer, I will admit that out of all Pitt's designs, this isn't one of my favorites. Um, I found it a little too easy I do tend to be quite good at packing puzzles, so maybe I'm slightly biased there. Um, I'm no expert. I, I still have um, some of Pitt's stuff that I haven't solved. Um, but for me, this wasn't the hardest puzzle. So if you're looking for something that is very hard, then probably best to avoid this. However, if you're looking for a well-made, good-sized puzzle, something that could introduce you to packing puzzles or introduce your friends to packing puzzles, then this is a great... Um, starter kind of puzzle uh, to go for also it, you know great graining it looks really good on the side it's going to last a long time um, so it's well worth um, you know checking out and trying to uh, have a solve yourself and see if actually if you enjoy solving this or not don't know how many solutions there are whether there's one unique solution i'm pretty sure tom said in his email that there's only one solution but i have to check that out um, and, and that's it. It's a beautiful puzzle, very well made, obviously world famous designer, world famous um, puzzling wood craftsman uh, in Tom. And if you fancy checking this out, definitely get hold of him and uh, get yourself a copy. So that's the review for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you have, please give me a thumbs up, a like and a follow. It's always great to have new followers and I'll speak to you all very soon. That's bye for now.